Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Move Podcast. We're talking about the Tour of Lombardia. I'm one of your hosts, Lance Armstrong, coming to you live from Lost Wages, aka Las Vegas, where I was last night, um, <clears throat> right in the front of the action, watching Tyson Fury and Wilder go at it again for the third time. Tyson Fury easily winning. Over there in Austin, Texas, we got J.B. Hager down there. In Greenville, George Hincapie, and over in Madrid, as 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 always, Johan, you're up in the the backdrop game always. Johan Brunel. Uh, today's show brought to you by Aura, as it is each and every time, the most accurate sleep track device on the market. Um, whether it's sleep, activity, recovery, all of the vital key metrics uh, when it comes to performance, sleep is key. Uh, changes everything. Head on over to Aura Ring, O U R A Ring.com. Well, we're breaking down the action from uh, the Tour of Lombardia, which uh, is actually a special race. It's not a race that, uh, George, you probably only did one or two of them, I'm guessing. Um, never done one of them, actually. I've never done. Never done. Uh, see, I, I would have thought early in your career you, 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 they made you do one. Uh, but these are our old roads. Like this is, you know, when we first turned pro and moved to Europe. Uh, living in Como, this was, this was like in our, literally in our backyard. And, and, and for those who watched, it's, it's just such a beautiful part of the world. Um, super, super, uh, hard and technical. Um, but I, I didn't know you never did one. No, my first year, uh, stage year with Motorola, I did like all the lead up races like Piemonte and, uh, <laughs> I remember Antonio. that. Yeah. And then for Lombardia, I, I was that. actually just kind of in the car watching the race. I went to the feed zone. And uh, like you said, Lance, we lived there for three years and I never did it. Lombardia was obviously the last race of the year always. And fortunately for me, they always let me go home around September. So <laughs> it just never uh, was on my calendar. Yeah, it's it's, uh, uh, you know, and, 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 and most people know this now, but um, just once again, just an exceptional performance by Tade Pogacar. What can this kid just not do? Like it, mm -hmm. it, it, and we were talking in the pre-show you know he, he shows up at the beginning of the season having won the tour last year wins the tour of uae just like it's a training race then obviously dominates the tour and then just it just go up at the end of the season and just win one of the hardest one day classics monuments wins tireno, wins tireno Adriatico also. yeah it, it, it's johan what is is this just mm. it, it and we speak about this all the time it's just a different sport now like it just they make it mm. look so easy mm. i don't know if it's a different sport there's definitely this generation of of young guys who who race differently plan their season season differently i mean if we're talking about pogachar you know he this year he last year he wins the tour the year before in his first year professional already on the podium in the vuelta three stage wins this year wins the tour again plus two monuments he wins Lies baston liege in the spring and he wins uh Tour of Lombardy now, which is the first. I mean, there's only three three riders in history who have done that. So if you look at my background, you have Pogacar, you have Eddie Merckx. And then if I move to this side, you have Fausto Coppi there. Mm. So Fausto yeah, you gotta, Coppi. You got you to work on that. You're not because I know, I know, I know. This is we we expect more. Yeah, okay. I'll do next time. I I'll only see I only see two right now. Well, anyway, yeah, I, I think Eddie Merckx is obviously, you know, it's a good guy to be compared with. But um, yes. You know, to say so, the least. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, let's not forget, he, start, he starts by winning the UAE tour, tour, which is the first objective of the team. Obviously, the mm -hmm. home uh, home country race for the team wins that wins his first race of the year, wins his last race of the year. And no, oh, by the way, wins the Tour de France in the middle of the year. I mean, the guy, he sets his mind to the, his objectives. Mm -hmm. And what's so impressive to me and being at that age, 23 years old and just having the mental, you know, fortitude to race all of these races leading up to Lombardia, knowing that Lombardia is his main objective yeah. and puts all of his ego aside and is essentially just training. Doesn't care that he's getting dropped by Roglic, by Nibali, by all these guys. He has one focus on his mind, that's Lombardia, and look what he did today. That's absolutely yeah. incredible for such a young rider to be able to do that. You know, and the, yeah, on, the heels of, on the heels of what Lance Go was ahead. saying, I, I, I think about Lance and like, you know, keep in mind Pogacar just won two back-to-back -to -back tours to France, right? That's the pinnacle. That's the most important thing. In your day, you would go home after that. Like you're the, you're the tour de France champion. Does Slovenia care about Lombardia? No disrespect to the race, but are you surprised that 
even has these objectives when the tour should be everything. It's, 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 it's the thing that surprises me the most, like, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, just keeping the body going or, just, you know, these are a long season. Like, that's the thing I'm like, wait a minute. What, what is, mm-hmm. I get it. Lombardia is a, is a monument. And he, he, he um, joined a very, very elite club, but like, really? Like, uh, and, and <clears throat> all that to say it is uber impressive. Like I, I, I just, you know, back in the day, you'd have guys that, you know, maybe they had some incentives in their contract and, you know, winning a monument, winning a classic, you know, getting more UCI point. There's all reasons to do it, but I don't think that's the reason. Like this, is this, this kid just likes to show up and race. Yeah, absolutely. It's also what he says, you know, he's not interested in, statistics or records he just likes to have fun on the bike and i think Mm. right now that's his secret to success because let's not forget you know he's still very young he's the best cyclist in the world right now has a huge contract for many years i don't know how many but at least four or five years um so it's easy to lose the sense of reality and the fact that you know in my opinion he's still i mean he, he he looks like a kid Right. And he still rides his bike having fun like a kid, which is mm-hmm. which is really impressive. Um, and also what's what's impressive is that, you know, for for the first time in many years, I think Tour of Lombardy, we had a lot of really good guys, almost all the best guys in the world together in the same race, mm-hmm. uh, which gives even more value to the victory of Pogacar, I think. Yep. I mean, look at the front group that was that was just behind him. You had um, Primus Roglic, you had Valverde, you had Alaphilippe, the new world, the the, the re new world champion. Yeah, um, Yates, Bardet, Vingegaard. It was stacked. Yeah. yeah, here's a great story. I mean, Vingegaard. I haven't mm-hmm. seen the guy since the tour. It's like, I mean, here's a guy that that can go home to Denmark and put his feet up. Yeah, yeah. Like this, and all of a sudden, the, the guys in the front of the race at the end of the season, it's like, wait. Aren't you out mm. like doing criteriums and drinking beer and like, <laughs> and, and just fucking off? Like, like what are, and then boom, these guys, it, it's, it's really cool to see. I say, I mean, yeah. really. Yeah. I think, I think the, uh, the mindset nowadays is like, they try to, it seems like these top guys are trying to end the season at a lot higher level to have a bit easier of an off season. That way they're, they, they're, they end the season super fit. They can take the time off that they need and they get back to it, you know, quickly rather than mm. the way we do it. We'd, do the tour basically, and then just mess around till we have to start training again in November. So I think their, their mindset is that they're going to keep working hard till the end of the year and, and be able to have a, a, a bit more relaxed of an off season before they you, need to you, get ready again. You bring up something interesting, George, and I know our listeners have asked about it. What, uh, what was your off season like for you guys, uh, cross training, actual time off the bike, if you did that can then compare to what do you suspect they're doing now? I've tried to take at least three weeks off the bike without touching the bike and just totally re- total recovery, you know, maybe play tennis once in a while, but uh, try to rest <laughs> as much as possible. <laughs> um, but really just have no, no set agenda in terms of exercise. That was really important yeah. mentally and physically. Um, and I think Lance would do about the same. Wouldn't you, yep. you'd start yeah, you'd be, uh, minus, minus the tennis. I, I didn't, yeah, uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't whack around a fuzzy ball much in the off season. Um, I still, I, st- I think they still take three weeks off. Wow. Um, I mean, you kind of have to, you know, if it was only for the mind. Um, but I, I don't think it's 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 a lot different. Um, the off season, um, obviously, you know, they start. I mean, what's what's really impressive is that's that's a big difference. Is that they're there? If you look at, let's say, let's let's look at Pogaccia, Roglic, and Alaphilippe. They've been there from the first race till the last race. I mean, yep. with with resting periods in within, but they're able to go a whole season, you know, basically for their objectives. And uh, and then they're not the only ones. There's there's many of those that has changed a lot. Yep. Yep. Hey guys, today's show brought to you by Helix. This is this is our go to mattress, George. You you you. Um, I, I always love telling the story because it, it 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 what you sleep on starts with taking a test. Right. And so uh, the, this is the, their secret sauce. You, you, you go in, you fill out a, a form, a survey, a test. You sort of describe the things that are most important to your sleep. Um, and then they customize the mattress. This is one of the top rated mattresses, if not the top rated mattress um, out there. Uh, I love it. Um, totally game changer for me. I've been sleeping on the Helix mattress for about a year, as I know uh, you have as well. Johan, we're still working on trying to get one over mm. there to Europe. You won't believe it, man. This mattress shows up 
And, and, and you won't believe that there is actually something inside this box that you're going to sleep on. You open this box and it goes. Dang, 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 dang. It's like a cartoon. Um, it's incredible. Head on over to helixsleep.com slash the move. Right now they're offering up, up to $200 off mattress orders, two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash the move. Fill out the quiz, get your customized mattress and change the game. Today's show also brought to you by Roca. Uh, amazing folks down there in Austin, Texas, just doing incredible work, uh, push themselves all the time, create product for people that push themselves whether it's outdoor stuff, um, the sunglasses, or indoor stuff, aka uh, the prescription stuff, uh, total game changer. Rob and his whole crew just killing it down there. Uh, the Move listeners get twenty percent off. Head on over to Roka. That's R O K A dot com, and enter the Move, the Move, all one word for twenty percent off. A bunch of them in the Peloton as well. <clears throat> um, hey, uh, so. Uh, not not to get ahead of ourselves, but this is, are there any more races this year? Uh, is there something I've missed? I mean, I know we've got the tour. <laughs> we've got the tour announcement this week, which we're gonna, <coughs> I'm pretty excited yeah. to, as we are uh, every year. I'm excited to talk about that when, it, when, it, when they release that, but are we done? Are, are we done racing bikes? The big, the big races are done. Yeah. So today we had Paris two Paris tours, which before was the world tour race. Um, actually the only classic that the great Eddie Merckx was never able to win. Um, that, that was happening today, but, uh, and there's still a few races in Italy. Um, but, but, you know, it, it's, it's basically over now, right? But, you know, so, cyclocross, cyclocross season has started. This is the other thing. I mean, oh, how, how about we just roll right into, we're talking about time off the bike, but some of these guys, let's, let's just roll into cyclocross. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Well, you know, the, the two, the two big, big, uh, names of the road and cyclocross, Van der Poel and Van Aert. They're taking some uh, some serious time off. I think a month or even longer. Um, today, the World Cup season starts in in the US. Uh, the World Cup season uh, cyclocross. Um, but yeah, I mean, all the all the big races are are over now. And uh, I guess you know it, business as usual. You know, the teams are probably already getting together uh, in their. You know, th this is actually a good a good way of having a three four day camp. With the new guys, a lot of teams are actually doing that in Italy after the Tour of Lombardy um, to start making plans already. Because you know, as soon as the last race is over, you start planning the next year. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, and this is no panic cooking race. I mean, this is a 240 <laughs> kilometer race, 4,500 meters of climbing. Is that mm -hmm. what we had? Yeah, what a way to end the season. That was just the trans very translation. Impressive. That that is over 15 for those that that, that work off uh, feet. Um, that's over 15,000 feet of climb. That, I mean, that's just, you don't do day. I mean, I, I remember George doing some, uh, certain camps in, in Tenerife and I would send you uh, occasionally I'd be like, dude, 15,000 feet today. I mean, I literally thought I did like, like, I, yeah. like I went to the moon mm -hmm. and, and just bam, like that, that is a legit day. Yeah. And I think they still had 40 kilometers an hour average. I mean, they were racing from the gun, super aggressive racing and Hey, we can't, we can't not. Now talk about Masnada. The ride that he did was absolutely mm. incredible. He was clearly sort of working for Alaphilippe. And when he realized that Alaphilippe didn't have it, took off. Hometown hero. I don't know how he bridged the 30 second gap to Pogachar, one of the best ascenders in the world. He must have, you know, known that downhill like the back but of his hand. But that was he's super impressive. He, he's from Bergamo. I mean, yeah. let, let's not forget. I mean, there is there is a tremendous advantage having you know, let's just, let's just say that that final descent, if you, if you grew up there having done it, I don't know, just call it 50 times. He's probably done it mm -hmm. 200 times, a uh, yeah. huge advantage. And, and, and also you have a, a, a guy like Pogachar who's like, okay, yeah, let, let me know when you get up here. And <laughs> yeah, I think, I, I think I'm it was a combination, a combination of, I mean, Masnada obviously was in great shape already. He, he was in the front and all those uh, lead up races. Um, Pogacar also knew the downhill, but you know, doing it once or twice in recon is not the same as uh, as knowing it as 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 your back road. And uh, and I think Pogacar obviously didn't take too many risks. He knew he, he knew that Masnada, if Masnada was coming, he was still gonna win. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's that was only that that was the only thing that that the Koenig quick step could do. You know, I think we should talk about uh, Avenapool a little bit. You know, Avenapool was also seen as one of the big favorites. Um, Said he didn't have a great day. Uh, I personally think that Remco still needs to mature a little bit in those big 
plus 200 kilometer races. That's obviously a completely different game than racing 200 kilometers. And then the last hour in a big classic is, is different. And you could see that, you know, he, he obviously didn't have a great day. Um, and but also, hey, John, I, want, I just yeah. want to, I just want to touch on that. Um, it, it is in, and we can go back to a year ago when, um, it, well, you mm-hmm. could argue that his career almost came to an end. I mean, you, oh, yeah. you could even argue that maybe his life almost came to an end. I mean, this is one mm-hmm. of the most the, 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 the drastic and dramatic crashes we've ever seen. <clears throat> um, you think that weighed mm-hmm. on him? I mean, just coming back and that th- th- there's something to be said for just being there, mm-hmm. um, which is uh, uh, meaning, you know, kind of a victory just to be on the start line after you look back and, and reflect on just how nasty that crash was. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't. I don't think that. I mean, he was in great shape. He won one of those uh, midweek races uh, by himself. I think you, you know that if if you look at if you look at the pre-race favorites, you, you can you easily say that Primoz Roglic, who won Milan Turin and Piemonte, uh, Adam Yates, who was incredibly strong in those races, and Evenepoel, who was very strong. Those were like the three big favorites, and then. You know, you finally come to the to the big appointment, and you see that none of those three actually have the legs. And Pogacar was—I wouldn't say he was hiding himself or anything or training. I mean, he he was trying, George. You know, and like the race that Primoz Roglic won against Adam Yates, he was he was third or fourth, I think. Um, but you know, a big classic, uh, plus two hundred kilometers, two hundred forty in this case, it's still a different. It's a different game, you know. Uh, until 200 kilometers, there's a lot of riders who can do that. Um, I think that was a little bit the case of Evenepoel. Um, and then, you know, a part of Masnada, I think we should obviously also talk and and, and applaud Alejandro Valverde. Yeah. Um, I mean, what a guy. 41 years old. Um, it's not that he's back racing. I mean, he, he we, also, we all knew about his crash in the Vuelta and coming back. He already won a stage... Two weeks ago in the Tour of Sicily, his first race back, won a stage there, and and now is there top five with all the best riders in the world. I mean, how long can can this guy keep going? You know, I mean, it's unbelievable. I, I think it'd be a fun just uh, storyline and experiment. It's like you just keep racing as long as as you want. Like let's literally. I mean, the dude could be in. Look, let's let's address the elephant in the room. And the guy has overcome so much stuff in his career. Like, if, mm. if, I mean, if we look at our era and our generation, and and the dude, it, it, it's like he's he's a robot. It's mm. he's totally immune to any bullshit, mm-hmm. whether it's whether it's the press, whether it's crashes, whether it's all this. I mean, the guy to, he he is robotic. Like, I, I mm. and I I applaud him. I mean, he and we were uh, messaging uh, with each other the other day, and I said, listen. This is Hall of Fame. I mean, he is clearly in in cycling doesn't have a Hall of Fame, but um, this is this guy's so easily entrenched in the Hall of Fame. Like, it's just so impressive. How is there no cycling Hall of Fame? Well, and and as as soon as I said that, Mm -hmm. I I think there is some kind of Hall of Fame. I think, yeah, I think there's something here in the U.S., but it's not like, um, it's not like, you know, Canton, Ohio, where there's, you know, you, they show up and wear the yellow jacket, gold jacket or whatever and give a speech. Mm. Everybody cries. Uh, speaking of Hall of Famers, I, I played golf yesterday with Brian Erlocker. They talk about a fucking monster. This guy. Holy moly. And I don't, I don't actually don't think he's in the Hall. Now look at me, George, you're not the only one with fancy friends. You know, hitting balls. I see that. I know. Hitting, dropping names. Hitting balls with Moya and and you know Krychek and oh and Djokovic called me. No, no, no. But the, but this 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 guy is a beast. I I mean, it's funny. Like we look at the, we look we think about our sport, and I'm sure they they somebody said to me on the on the driving range. They're like, man, you look like you could you could jump in the peloton today. I said, shit. <laughs> there is. I would be. I would. I mean, we would be the first people dropped like out of the gate. Like they would just say yeah. go. And I would be dropped. And then two seconds later, George would be dropped. And these guys would all ride away. I said, there's no way. But you see guys like that. Um, and you're just like, dude, if this guy came around the the the, uh, the offensive tackle and hit me from the back, you, you wouldn't survive. Like, this is such a monster. So just so you know, I have also fancy friends, George. Mm. Yeah, well, Valverde, Valverde can keep can keep racing because, you know, uh, Oscar Sevilla. Oscar Sevilla still racing, 45, and winning. 
No, but yeah. this is the Johan. Yeah. Sorry, this different is level, very, different. Level, this is different very level, different. I mean, yeah. this yeah, this yeah. is this is not uh, the Criterium, uh, you know, cupcake circuit. Like this is this dude's <laughs> at the front of the hardest races in the world. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say uh, that what Oscar's doing is Criterium Cupcake racing. No, either <laughs> he's racing in Colombia, where there's like the best climbers in the world. But I get your point. But both racing at a high Val, level. Val, Valverde is different level, George. It's, it's, yes. yeah, Valverde sure. is a different level. Yeah. 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 Well, so I, I, show, I think I, I think for 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 movie star for for team movie star. I mean, they are lucky that they have Valverde and that he keeps racing because. You know, he is the movie star, basically. Uh, they have Enric Mas, obviously, who was, who was a bit, but after that, there's, there's not much, you know. And uh, so he's, he's decided now that he's going to do another year. So uh, I, think, I think he gets a, a deal at movie star as long as he wants. I, I think that's the thing. Like, we should just encourage this guy to just keep just changing the standard. And it, it, it's, I mean, why wouldn't he? I mean, we all know Valverde well. I mean, this is a guy who, um, who lives for the bike. And he, he should just keep, he should just keep raising. I mean, on the, you can't, on the and, and you can't the, rule him out for anything. Yeah. On yeah. The it's wild. The spectrum. We have uh, Dan Martin He's just announced his retirement race, his last race yesterday. Great career. Great guy. Lives in Girona. Done a bunch of cool projects in Girona. So we want to wish him the best then as a new chapter as well. That That's surprising to me. I mean, th- this is, I mean, this would, you know, he's not, how old is Dan Martin? 35. Maybe. Oh, is he? No. Oh, well. Uh, he should retire then. <laughs> Today's show also brought to you by Ventum Premium Bike Brand. This is my go-to whip, uh, as I like to call it. My NS1 on the road, my GS1 on the gravel. Uh, total game changer, direct to market, totally customizable, uh, hand-built uh, here in the USA, uh, right over here in, in um, just outside of, of Salt Lake City in Utah. Uh, also, congrats to Dee and his whole crew for their uh, the latest event they did that George and I have challenged each other to go do next year, the Wasatch All Road. Ready for that one, Georgie? Um, we can talk more too in other shows about how I finally started dropping George at the end of the Mallorca camp. <laughs> <laughs> Johan was the director uh, um, of the camp, I, and so he, I witnessed it. I witnessed. He witnessed it. it. This is so. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep prepping for the Wasatch All Road next year. 30 day money back guarantee, no questions asked. Choose your color, choose your size, totally customizable. Head on over to VentumRacing.com and use the promo code The Move for 10 percent off. Which, by the way, these bikes aren't cheap these days, so this is this is a damn good deal. VentumRacing.com. Last one of the day. Today's show also brought to you by LMNT. Something I really need today after being out. Last night with this crew, uh, most of the our, our Aspen people came in for the big fight. Uh, Fury and Wilder, um, I need some LMNT. I need to replace essential liquids in my body. Um, the, the thing I love about LMNT is there's no crap. There's no sugar. There's no this, all this junk. No, 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, 60 milligrams of magnesium. I am tripling up today. Uh, it is my go-to rehydration source. Uh, for our listeners, head on over to drink LMNT. That's right, the letters drinklmnt.com slash the move. And for the cost of shipping, get your free sample kit and try it out. I, I'm getting so many folks. Um, I'm sure you are too, uh, George, that just they hit me up. They're like, dude, that this stuff is a yeah. game changer. It, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it really is. Um, it's on fire. All right. One of the cool. things I was glad, gonna... <laughs> glad, glad you agree, George. That's that's great. Uh, <laughs> uh, no. One of the things I, I was going to bring up uh, on the heels of you guys talking about these veterans um, riding over the age of forty and then competing against guys half their age on the horizon is if we don't put enough pressure on Johan Bernil as it is. Uh, we've been kicking around this idea of uh, Johan's faces to watch the new up and comers. Oh. As hmm. we get into, I know we have the tour announcement show coming up. Is, is, JB, have, has anybody told him, or are you just dropping this on him now? Because <laughs> we've I talked actually, about I, it. You and him have. We've talked about it, but you know, I mean, Johan. Johan well, he, he he's down. I can see him. He's down. But I just, I was like, wait, have we told him yet? <laughs> it's always it's always best well, to I know, address I, it I, in public. I know, I know now. I know now. <laughs> but this is second nature, right? We've <clears> seen this for years. Like the the the, the I remember um, the one I remember the most is 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 Pidcock, you know, you want to say, you know, uh, 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 mark my obstacles. Uh, I'm, I'm 
Uh, we got a new one today. Wine, we got the wine uh, yeah, we got a we got a new. I was walking to the wine guards. <laughs> we were like, "Excuse me, the wine." I corrected. Guards? I corrected in the same sentence. I corrected, but, but he's uh, like, yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. mark my words. Listen to this. Don't forget this name, Pitcock Thomas Pitcock. We we're like, what? And boom, <laughs> like it, it. It really is your. Um, it's 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 such a strength of yours. Yeah, I have a few. I have a few new ones, but we can we can do a good show. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Yeah. That's why. That's why y'all are going to do it. I know because yeah. I'm guaranteeing. Oh, you you're not, you're, are you not participating? Are you not participating in my show? You not participating? Or are you just going to write them down and then make predictions based on on my tips? I, guys, if you, the, 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 you got me there. I don't, I'm happy to <laughs> hop on. I don't. I don't. I'll just kind of nod. <laughs> and agree and say yes what you know somebody said what do you think i say whatever johan says that's what i think like that's <laughs> yes we only get an, we only get a, a a certain amount of attention from him johan we can't distract him too much we need him focused for like the world cup races and the in the grand tours yeah yeah, yeah and the hinka uh, and the hinka fondo the hinka fondo, fondo which is which is coming up in a couple of weeks that's right 10 days from now is it is it just year. 10 days 10th year Something like that yeah, or or two weeks from now. Basically. How many riders, George? There's a couple thousand, right? We're gonna have we're gonna have uh, almost three thousand this year. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Our biggest, yeah. That's our. Is, does the county or the city or whoever do, do they limit it? Could you have, you know, could you have ten thousand? I don't think we we want more than than uh, three thousand, just because their roads are small and as you know, I mean, it's just uh, it might be a little bit too hectic with that many that much more people, but. This year will be our biggest ever. And I'm excited Meanwhile, that you know, Lance and his new found fitness is going to be riding with us in the first yeah. group. Uh, yeah. So it's going to be fun. He's never done the 80 miler. He's come a bunch of years. He always does a 50 turns off. So this year is going to be a. Uh, you know, it's exciting. funny, George, you say this because our, our dear friend, Marcelo Claire, uh, who is just a monster of a man. That's right. You did do it with him. Thank you. I, I have done the 80 and I was the domestique extraordinaire for Marcelo and his, and his whole crew. So step off. <laughs> That's right. Well, you're going to do the 80 with me this year. <laughs> here's a, here's a lot a, of water here, stops. Here's a little thing for you guys to think about. Cause I think now if, if people have been listening to the move, you've been for over four years, you've heard Lance and George going back and forth about who's fit, who's fit, who's more fit while you two are doing that. You know, who's getting really fit behind your back apparently is John Ulrich. And the next time oh, you guys boy. see him, he's going to clean up. Oh, there's no yeah. doubt. I mean, <laughs> no the, 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 we, we have created a monster. Yeah. yeah. Lance, I no, mean, no. you were not, you were not on the, on the pre-show yet, but uh, I was, I was saying to George that one of the, one of our guests in Mallorca, uh, Pavel from, from Czech Republic has hired Jan Ulrich to do the Mallorca 312 at yeah. the end of this month. Yeah. So that's, no, Jan, you know, uh, wait, the, he's the, training, the, training hard. He, he it, it it is look we don't I mean we all know how special that is and uh, but we boy we have we have created a monster I mean the guy <laughs> is so back like he's and he's so in love with life and the bike and yeah. um, it, it's it's just uh, yeah I get these and it's so fun you know occasionally I'll I'll just play it out loud like he'll send me these little um, these voice memos they're almost like voicemails but uh, he, he's just like. It it, it, it it is just so amazing to see. Um, and by the way, if we show up and Jan Ulrich drops me by an hour, I don't give a shit. Okay. I really don't because I love the guy and um, it, it's just so special to see. Uh, and, and, oh God, I miss is that it. Why you, you, you attacked us on top of, uh, what was the name of that mountain, Johan? When uh, you came Saka, around last Saka, 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 Saka. <laughs> you sprinted us for the KOM. You don't really care, right? Well, I got, I, I, I <laughs> no, he got dropped before George. I, got you, dro you, I yeah, know, exactly. but then he came back. Dropped. He came yeah. back and popped us. But I don't the, know about it, you guys. I'm feeling a little bit nostalgic. We've had 2021 season is over. We've had an awesome uh, amount of races to talk about the Tour de France, all the world cups. And we appreciate all of our listeners and our followers. And I think, I know Lance has been working hard with the the move team on making the show even better next year. So keep an eye out for all the changes and new things that are coming next year. Tweaks, just, just little subtle tweaks, little yeah. subtle tweaks. Yeah. And, and um, that's right. And, and uh, excited for this show coming up this, 
I guess it is this week. What is the date now? Yeah, it's this week where the, where they released the route, and yeah, it's always it's, it's always it's it's always. It, you know, I guess it will will end on this. But Johan, is there any um, leaks or buzz mm-hmm. out there about what we can expect? Is this? I mean, are we going I back to the Vaughn Two? Are we going out to Wes? Are we going? Uh, you know, how about we go back to a couple of long time trials? How about a team time trial? Okay, how about a prologue? How about all the? We is know, there anything we, out there? We know they're reading? starting in. Copenhagen, right? There's going to yeah. be a gazillion people on the side of the road. There's yeah. going to be as many people as we've ever seen at the start of the Tour de France, yeah. which yeah. in itself brings in a lot of stress, a lot of intensity. So that's going to be an amazing start city. Yeah. You know what? You know, you know, that, just real, real, real quick, John, you know, what we yeah. get a lot of, and and it's, I, I personally push back on this, but man, we get so many people that say, why don't you do the show from Europe? Why don't you do it from, from France? Well, like, and, and we're getting and, a lot of that too. And we're getting more and more like, why don't you guys, why aren't you there? And, and I think it really kind of picked up after the Mallorca thing, because people saw just, you know, uh, what was going on there and, and old friends and, 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 um, and, and rivals and just, but boy, we're seeing a lot of that. Imagine we roll up to Copenhagen. Yes. <laughs> yes. Do, 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 do. Like a Viking. <laughs> yeah. What's up? Um, <laughs> any buzz out there, Johan? What, what are we going to expect? Uh, what can I, we expect? I, uh, to be honest, I haven't I haven't checked, um, and also because you know it's the every year we talk about this, right? They, they announce the route, and then we speculate on okay, this and this. First of all, the tour is going to do what they want to do, right? Whatever we want, if we want long time trials, it, it, it's it's going to be their decision. But I think you know we always have this debate after the announcement. It's good for this, and it's not good for this one. But at the end of the day. It's the strongest guy with the strongest team who wins That's the, right. the tour. You know, right. um, the the course. The uh, I think what makes the tour hard is the level of the race. It's not the course. It's the how 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 much in form everybody is compared to the other races. Yeah, it's a great point. I mean, nobody ever. I mean, think about this. Nobody ever in the history of cycling gets to Paris. You know, finishes second or third and says, you know, but if they would have picked a different route last October, mm-hmm. I would have won. Right. Like every great coach in any sport says, you know, or believes that they would have won the game. They just ran out of time. Right. Nobody gets to Paris. Yeah. It's like this year. Somebody says, oh, but if they would, if they would have had a team time trial or if they would have had too long time trials, individual time trials, I would have won. Like, no, you're right. Like it's regardless of, of what they lay out in the off season, the best man wins. It, it, yeah. it It's, it's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll um, we'll be back for that right uh, on the 14th that they announce. So I think we'll we'll have something. To, I mean, we can we can have a look at it and and then give our opinion on who's it who's it good for and who's it not good for. And then yeah. it doesn't really matter what we think. <laughs> In July, it's a different game. Yeah, well, that's that's right. Is this a lot of earlier announcement than normal, Johanna? I feel like it's usually around Halloween for us. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's no. always, it, it might be a few days earlier. It's, so it's kind of always. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we'll ch- chat this week. Huh? Right. Okay. Good. You want, you want anything else? Um, nothing else. No. Okay. No, <laughs> yep. nothing else. The, the other, <laughs> other, I mean, I got a lot of requests from, from people uh, about, or, you know, a lot of comments about the week we spend in Mallorca and, People asking where we will do our next Mallorca, or we do camp, or or the move camp. So uh, yep. we need to we need to talk about that. Okay, mm-hmm. we can talk offline about that as you walk through the <laughs> wine guards. JB, what you got? You got anything else to close us up here? No, no, just uh, yeah. Look for that um, preview. That'll be a first time, and I think it's going to become an annual tradition where Johan gives us the new names to watch. So we'll do right. that after the tour announcement. Uh, we'll schedule yeah. that. But I'm really looking forward yeah. to that. All right, Georgie, I'll I'll, yeah. I'll see you. Uh, we'll, we'll talk this week, but I can't wait to can't wait to get over there and ride that Fondo, man. I know it's going to be a yeah. good time. I trained hard last night for that thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I need you back on the bike. Get ready for the fun. Well, it's, I tell you, I don't know what it's doing, right? I mean, it's beautiful here in Las Vegas today, but it's, man, it's, I don't know if there's going to be a lot of bike time. Aspen's turned. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, no. we got, we got snow coming this week. Ugh. Um, So I might have to, I might yeah. have to uh, 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 change my plan to do the 50. I, I heard you, you have a nice uh, indoor setup also. 
Yep. Uh, yep. I have a, a, this whole, this damn Zwift thing uh, <laughs> is, is just taking over cycling. It, 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 and I'm, God dang it. I'm, I'm, I'm an outdoor kitty as y'all know. Okay. So, uh, but I'm going to have, I'm going to, I'm going to start to be an indoor kitty. Go in with an open mind, yeah. give it a shot. There, there must Absolutely. be something to it. When there, that many people are into it, there must be something there. Yeah. Well, yeah. the great thing about it is now, now we have a, when we have a move kit on Zwift as well, so we can do a couple move rides all together. We've got Chatting. the, we do, we've got the OG, we do kit, the all Navy one. OG we do. Uh, yeah. yeah, we've got that. But listen, George and, and JB, please. Let's we're going to roll this shit out over time. So, you know, patience, it's coming. Patience. Got it. Yeah. Got it. All right. I'll talk to you guys this week. Uh, All right. Thanks. For, thanks for tuning in everybody. And uh, that pretty much wraps up the season. That's kind of, that's kind of uh, brings it, brings a uh, tear to my eye. The cycling season is, is finally over, but um, yeah, it's been a great year. Thanks for tuning in everyone. And uh, we'll chat this week when they release Thanks, the uh, 2022 Tour de France route. Think about that, 2022. Mm. It's hard. It's hard to even say. It is. Yeah. All right, y'all. Thanks. All right, thanks. Bye-bye. Peace.